Hello, my name is Sang Min Han. And I'm Alvin Wijaya. And we have built a um, security system that's based on pitch as well as a uh, personal identification number. Um, so in order to unlock a system, a uh, user will have to sing a series of notes that is uh, consistent with the predefined password. I see. So you can, by singing, you can define a password and then you have to match it later on. Correct. correct. Oh, man. Okay. <laughs> Let's see the, so show me the pieces here. So the first page, the first piece is the keypad and the LCD. These are the user input and this is the user output. This is the display. And we are using a Mega 1284P as our main microcontroller. And in here we have the microphone, the amplifier, as well as the two LEDs for identification whether the system is locked or unlocked. As we see here, both LEDs are on. This means the system is in the initialization state. Okay. Yes, so the first component is the microphone um, analog input system. So it is a very simple system. It, it's just one op amp that handles it's, both the... It's a microphone sticking up there. Yeah, okay. Yes. So the single op amp performs both um, bandpass filtering as well as amplification. And the keypad and the LCD screen serves as, the, as our main user interface of the system. Okay. So do you want to demo it? Sure. So, signal started to continue press button A. So I'm pressing button A. Enter password up to four digits. Let's do one, two, three, four. So this is where you're, you're setting up the, the password. That is correct. This okay. is the numeric password. And now you're, now you're going to set up the I'm going to set up the tone. So I'm going to sing and then I'm going to press A to let the system record my pitch. Okay. So, let's do that. Me. That's the first pitch. Second pitch is... Okay, so okay. It's, it's been recorded and I'm going to press A to continue. And then sing lock is locked, to unlock press button A. To unlock, okay, so now you're going to enter the, 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 the pin. Then it's the pin, and we, as we see the system is currently locked. Uh huh, that's red light on. Yeah. So enter the password, one, two, three, four. I'm going to sing this. Alright, so now it says get ready to input pitch, pitch zero. zero. Okay. Let's okay. input pitch zero, I'm going to sing. Me. Second is do. Then A is continue. And as you see, the system is unlocked. So you're and accurate. I'm accurate with the green LED. Is and system. the green LED is on. Yes. yes. Let's say I insert the same uh, number but different pitches to see whether the system is actually secure or not. Okay. So let's. I'm gonna press it to lock back in again. As we see, the LED turns back to red. Single lock is locked. So let's do the same pass, the same number, but different pitches to see whether the system is secure or not. Mm -hmm. So I'll press A. Let's say just now I sing me and then do. I'm gonna sing do me the whole time. So okay. me second pitch me. Press it to continue and see. Okay, still locked. So still locked. Still locked. Okay. It's still unlocked. So how did you yeah. determine the the accuracy required? So there is an engineering trade-off in how we set up the system. So we fine-tuned via trial and error the system so that it works per best for human voice. So what we do is the whole system is built on is based on the fast Fourier transform algorithm. And once we have the once we take the FFT of the analog input signal from the microphone, we take the FFT, calculate the magnitudes, and we sort the magnitudes in ascending order. And we take the we take ten maximum peaks, both for the password and then the input system. And from the ten peaks, we only look for three top highest peaks in the input signal. So we search for those three. So we collect ten and compare three. So th these parameters are tunable in the code, um, and people can adjust it depending on their needs. So these two parameters collectively determine the strictness or how strict the system is. So the FFT has what kind of frequency resolution? So we are sampling at 4 kilohertz, um, that which will give us the, a whole bandwidth of usable frequencies of, of 2 2,000 hertz. Um, and then we are using 128. Um, so the resolution, so the input signal is 128, and then also the frequency bins are 128, which gives. But 
the signal is all real valued, so we know that the Fourier transform of a real value signal is symmetric in the frequency domain. So we only com we only use half of it, 64, and that gives a resolution of about 30 hertz, which is um, good enough for any human who are not who don't have perfect pitch. So so your your basic resolution is uh, at at. At, at the frequencies you were singing is probably 10 percent yes or so and and that seems like a reasonable air band yes. but but then you have to you, you're, you're looking for ordering of peaks also so you're looking at something like the three peaks that have the most energy in them yes yes and that just says something about the throat doesn't it doesn't yes. that say something yes. about the resonances yes yes so you're really you're doing better than just pitch identification. You're actually doing something about the dynamics of the person who is singing. Correct. That is correct because what determines um, a sound of a violin playing A440, what differentiates a violin's A440 um, versus a piano's 440 is the energy and different harmonics. And we actually noticed when we were playing around with the system. Um, Alvin would sing a series of pitch, and I would try to mimic him, and it would lock for mine, my voice, whereas it would unlock for his voice. So it also has some sort of voice recognition, yeah. or it, it, user user recognition. Right, there is some key signatures Be because it because the the width of the resonances of your throat is very person dependent. It turns right. out, right, very interesting. So. In a way, that's a feature because it makes the lock very selective. That is correct. On the other hand, it could be a bug if you want a bunch of people to get in with the same code. Yes. Right. But but if you're if you're thinking of it as like a password, this is a good thing. Yes, yes it is. And very one more cool. Feature is that if you lock it multiple times and you try to unlock it uh, and you failed more than three times, it puts you into the jail state and it basically locks the system for a certain number of seconds and you can only retry it after some time. So you cannot keep on retrying it for safety features. So you can't you can't keep retrying it. So let's let's now go to a realistic user usable scene here where you're you're trying to get in and somebody's videotaping you. Yeah. How do you think this has some has some uh, resistance against that because of the resonance. Right. <clears throat> Even if the person videotaping you has perfect perfect pitch or plays back the videotape. Right. We actually tried doing that. Like someone someone else like recorded my voice and then he, like Han tried to like put it back again and it actually failed because the sound is generated by the by this little tiny speaker yes. isn't the same. Exactly. Right. So it's very cool. Safe. All right. So it's so it's pretty secure. Yeah. Yes. And there is also a just the regular average keypad based. Um, password as well in addition to the pitch. Right, so this I mean the two factor is always a good right, idea. Right. Right. And yeah. the whole system is um, has a very minimalist design. Um, the filter system is very um, simple and we had to kind of make up for that by adding more checks in the software. The whole pitch um, multiple peak detection system was based on the fact that we kind of lack a good um, high pass filter, so there is some DC components that we are not filtering out completely. But by having a multiple peak detection detection system where we are comparing multiple harmonics the, with the greatest magnitudes, that kind of eliminates the need for a separate high pass filter. Got it. So the final question is: Is it ready to go on your front door? Uh, well, I have faith in it. Um, but if you're storing um, bunch of cash lying around somewhere, probably not. Maybe you'd want another factor yeah. like a key. Yes. yes, and I would keep in mind that this whole system um, costs less than $20, $20 for sure. We calculated the cost and it turned out to be about $16. And it's pretty good for that amount of money, but if you have something that you need to keep safe, then I would go for a go for, the, go for Go for three-factor identification. Yes. Yes. yes, yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you.